the, um, the handle of the hammer is being pushed up this way, that's bending the ruler, and it's forcing this end of the ruler down onto the table. And again, it's a pretty stable system. Oh. <laughs> Please don't use that. <laughs> you know I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was asking for that. <laughs> so today I want to talk about a pretty basic idea in physics, and that's the idea of vectors. Now, I guess mathematicians might try to steal vectors from us, but, but they are a tool that we use, and, and they help us understand some of the physical com concepts that go on behind um, physics. Now, the idea is pretty simple. A vector is something that has a size, and it has a direction. So the symbol that I'm going to use is an arrow. Um, so we can think about things that are vector quantities in everyday life. So velocity is one of these um, vectors. So when you talk about a velocity, you have a size. So if, if um, I'm traveling in a car at 30 miles per hour, that's the, that's the magnitude or the size of my velocity. But the other important part of it is the direction. So velocity contrast with something like speed. Speed is just the number. Speed is just the 30 miles per hour without the direction. So when do we care about this? Well, um, let's say you're driving down a, the road in, in, in your car and you're traveling at, at 35 miles per hour. If you encounter a speed trap, that speed trap doesn't care what direction you're going in. They just want to know if you're above that, that magic number, 30 miles per hour, which is the speed limit. Um, so in that case, speed is all that matters. But let's say I'm crossing the road, and I look up and I see a car traveling at 30 miles per hour. I care very much whether it's going in the direction towards me or the direction away from me. So aside from um, velocity, uh, what other vector quantities might we have? Well, acceleration is one. Acceleration has a direction. It's just the change in velocity over time. So another one is force. Force obviously has a direction. Force is just something that moves a mass, moves an object. Um, so you can think of it as a push or a pull. So if I push on this book, I'm exerting a force, and it's a vector because it has a size and it has a direction. I'm pushing it in that direction. Now, let's sketch this out. So here's my book, roughly speaking. So Let's imagine we're both pushing on this book. I'm pushing in this direction, and you're pushing in this direction with about the same amount of force. Well, the neat thing about vectors is we can take those arrows and add them up to figure out in which direction that book is actually going to move. So let me just borrow your vector and, and, and shift it so it's up here. I can then add those vectors top to tail, and the resulting force is going to be in this direction. So what that says is that if I push this way and you push that way, the book goes that way, goes straight down the table. We can actually get Newton's second law. So Newton's second law is very simple. It's F equals MA. So it means that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So what I was just talking about, uh, about a force being something that accelerates a mass, now, because I'm talking about vectors, what you might see in a book is, or at least in, in my notation, which some people call North American, is we, we put a little arrow over these quantities because force and acceleration are both vectors. They both have um, a size and they both have a direction. Mass doesn't. Mass obviously doesn't have any direction. It's just a number. So if you look in a book, sometimes you might see um, symbols like that with arrows. Yeah, so sometimes, if you look in a textbook, you'll see, you'll see this notation, or maybe you'll see the vectors underlined, or often you'll see them in bold type. Okay, so all I'm doing here is tying a piece of string around this hammer. Oh, a good length. And now I'm going to use it to suspend this hammer from this ruler over the edge of the table. What we're doing here is just balancing the ruler and the hammer. And that works pretty well. That's pretty stable, right? We can actually take this a little further. There you go. So it's not magic, it's just physics. So what's happening here? Well, what's happening is that 
the sum of all of the forces on this system is equal to zero. So we've got one force, we've got gravity pulling the head of this hammer down. It's held here by the string, so it's pivoting around that. So when this end goes down, this end goes up, and that pushes against this end of the, the ruler. And what that means is that this end of the ruler on the table gets pushed down. And so because the center of mass of this system, most of the mass is here underneath the table, um, because the center of the mass is right underneath here, the whole system is stable. So all of those forces, all of those vectors sum to zero, and we get no acceleration, no change in the movement. That's a static system. Well, so I've talked about these forces, um, but it's hard to kind of visualize some of them because this ruler, being wooden, is, is pretty stiff. So we'll do it again, but we'll use a, a floppier ruler, and I have to shorten the string a little bit. Okay, so now all I'm doing is I'm switching the type of ruler that I'm using. I've made the string a little bit shorter. And I probably can't get it as close to the end of the table this time. But what you can see very clearly now is you can actually see that force acting upwards. It's bending this ruler. And so the, um, the handle of the hammer is being pushed up this way. That's bending the ruler, and it's forcing this end of the ruler down onto the table. And again, it's a pretty stable system. Cool. Let me yeah. try that again. Go. It's a pretty stable system. Yeah. I can poke it, and it's going to wobble a bit. Um, but I'm happy having my foot underneath, because I don't think it's going to fall. Go. Cool.